The way of the Lord is found in ether. When the old time comes to an end and ether flows freely, breaking right through to supreme power is simply a matter of being determined. When one has made a decision to become the Lord of Lords, he must first become as indiscriminate and ruthless as Ether itself. The Lord should have no other thought or object so much at heart as the art of war, for that is the only art that is expected of him who commands. Ether enslaves those who obey it and destroys those who do not. An example that the Lord must follow without fail. This is the substance of the way of the Lord, the way that leads to the temple of time, the way that leads to eternity. Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish. Welcome to Aether Lords. The Way of the Lord. Did y'all ever see a logo screen or one of those introductory panels that just goes way too hard for whatever the company or person is doing? Like you just can't justify how epic they tried to make it compared to what was delivered. <laughs> yes, this was originally a Russian game. Uh, I say originally, it was localized. It's not like they gave it away to somebody. But yes... This began as a Russian game. It is still a Russian game. It is just in English at the moment. And, uh, yeah, this is a weird one. If you've never heard of Ether Lords, no one could blame you. Because this is a game that influenced a lot of other games, which came shortly after it. But it did not leave much of its own footprint. Uh, it's remained a cult classic, and people who know about it, you know, it's one of those, like, if you know, you know. Uh, but if you don't, why would you? So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a mixed bag. But it's a good one, I think. And we've got to play the first one to get to the second one, which is way better. So, let's dive in. Alright, so we're going to do this kind of like we did when we played Disciples Sacred Lands. So we're going to pick a campaign, and we are going to play all the way through it, to the end, to the conclusion. And then if everyone has enough fun, uh, we can come back and we can play another campaign later on. Yeah, very much. I told you that story so I could tell you this one. All right, so we have two campaigns to choose from in the first Ether Lords game. Uh, let me give you the quickest possible rundown. There are four races, four civilizations in the world of Ether Lords. There are the Vital, the Kinets, the Synthets, and the Chaots. As you might guess from their appearance and from their names, these are basically uh, green, blue, black, and red if you're a Magic the Gathering player. Because that's what this is. Heroes of Might and Magic The Gathering. That is the most succinct possible way to describe Aether Lords. It is a turn-based strategy with an overworld map and heroes that level up and build armies, but the way they build those armies and cast their spells is by building and curating a deck of cards. So, yeah, the, the this one is kind of the quote-unquote good guys this looks like the bad guys right but realistically you know good and evil is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to this particular game so what y'all think flying leaf it's definitely a brighter colored campaign i will say that i know the flaming iron campaign uh is it's not difficult to look at but it's very dark <laughs> yeah, this is very, uh, this is very simic behavior in a Rakdos hat, as Maldhound would say. That's right, I learned your silly color names. 
All right, well then. Flying leaf it shall be. And we get to make up our own flag. Ooh, let's see. Hmm. Do you have a flag? No flag, no country. <laughs> okay, I kind of like the green and white. The The Kinet colors are blue and white, and the Vital color is green. So that kind of, that meshes well. Let's see. What about leaf? Hmm. Leaf does not encompass the uh, the Kinet civilization very well. This is more Kinet. Uh, she. What about sword? Because that's what we're going to do to everybody. Yeah, Heroes of Might and Magic. And Disciples as well. I mentioned Disciples. Uh, it, the, the Russian fan base is definitely the biggest one in Disciples. They were also the angriest when the third game was trash and the fourth game was nothing. With which I sympathize. Uh, we have to pretend otherwise. Oh, well then, let's see. If we want to give them a false sense of security... Well, let's see. That almost looks like three decks of cards, or like three hands of cards kind of spread out. Let's see, is there a shield? No, I don't see a shield. That's a fist. That's not much better than a sword. The skull is right out. Hmm. Most of these coats of arms, most of this heraldry is uh, pretty aggressive. Hmm. Does that torch say, I will light the way, or does it say more like, I will burn your house down? Hmm. Yeah, there's no rainbows. They were, uh, they were too powerful in, uh, tournament settings, so they were banned. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a good one. It's just, it's a book. It's a book. And this says, we're nerds. Don't hit us. Please leave us alone. We are, we are not worth your time. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> There's also the eaten, like the half-eaten apple core with the uh, worm in the middle. I don't know why... That's a choice. It's a fascinating one. Or this. This says to me, it's like, no, I'm already dead, man. Just just go on about your business. They already got me. <laughs> Alright, well, let's let's go with the book. That'll that'll put them on the back foot. It only happens once every thousand years, and is happening now. The four sons of the ether world have aligned themselves. The parade of suns came, announcing the beginning of the time of change predicted long ago. The time which brings chaos and renewal to the world of ether. The time which opens new passages in previously inaccessible mountain ranges. The time which changes previously familiar landscape utterly and completely. The time which once in a millennium gives lords of the four races inhabiting the ether world, synthets, chaots, kinets, and vitals, an elusive chance to compete for the place of the mysterious master of this world, the White Lord. And so all races of the ether world clashed in mortal combat on their way to the mysterious temple of time, the legendary abode of the White Lord. And the Lord of Vitals, Lord of Life and Diversity, who truly hates war and death, offered to shake hands with the Lord of Kinets, Lord of Harmony and Order, and spoke thus, I know, O oh wise Lord, that you are as much wary of the coming change as I am. The time of change threatens to bring terrible consequences to our world. It brings chaos and incalculable disasters. We must stick together in these frightening times, so we can stop the madmen thirsting for death and destruction. And thus, the Vitals became friends and allies to the Kinnets, united by mortal danger. The Vitals' lands and forests are fertile, 
The creatures living there are many and amazing, but the life of each and every one of them is valuable. The slender kinets are swift, their lands are cold, and so are their minds. They devote their lives to logic and philosophy, and the ether of stability made them a gift of firmness and persistency while carrying out their decisions, and so life and wisdom decided to do as they planned. And they must be resolute and cautious while going down this road. There you go. <laughs> uh, I grit my teeth every time that he says the vitals. Uh, that's probably a localization thing. But of course, I mean, I don't even know what they're called in, in Russian. They're probably called something else. So this is a localization as well. But I know in the second game, they pronounce it Vital. Because they understand that just saying Vitals was dumb. Yeah, the Vitals. Because they're going to get it. Oh, yeah, so there is our story. There's a great time of change, of upheaval. The stars are in alignment. It's the end of the world! Or the beginning. And there must be war, there must be chaos and competition, and there'll, it'll be ugly. It's a cage match to become the White Lord, if you can believe it. Yeah, well... The long prophesied time of change has arrived. The time of war and chaos is fast approaching. The Book of Life and the Chronicles from the beginning of times mention the mysterious temple of time, which preserves the origin of everything that exists and will occur. But the winds are carrying news about a ghastly creature in our woods. It's a creation by the synthets those hideous beings who believe in their own perfection. This is the first challenge to life. Our response will determine the course of fate. According to the legend, only a hero languishing in the tree trap can hope to overpower the razor beast. It is your task to find out if this is true. In the name of the children of woods, you must rid our sacred forest of this mechanical atrocity. May the power of life guide you. <laughs> could you, could you hear her break right at the very end? <laughs> this mechanical atrocity. And you can almost hear her start giggling when she's like, may the power of life guide you. Like she knew the performance she was giving. So yeah, to answer your question, what what is this voice over? Uh, it is what they could afford <laughs> during the localization. <laughs> yeah, she's having a great time. She is having a great time. All right, so we've got <laughs> we've got to find and defeat the Razor Beast after rescuing the Vital Hero from his prison. So win condition, defeat the Razor Beast. Loss condition, none. We can't lose. It's not possible for that to happen. All right, now here is where uh, y'all are gonna think that I am embarrassing myself. But you haven't played Aether Lords, have you? So you have all of the standard difficulty levels that you could imagine, right? Which is a monkey can do it, take some effort. Oh boy, we're getting places. Wow, this is gonna require special tools. And I'm a millennial. So, well, if you have, if you have played it, you will know that the second Aetherlords game was much better balanced than the first one. The first Aetherlords is notorious among those who have played it for just atrocious level design. Uh, and that is particularly true, like, it, it would be funny if this was the opposite, right? I mean, like, well, it would be normal if a campaign got harder as you got into it. But the thing is, both of the campaigns, the first scenario is so unbalanced, it is so easy to lose, and the second one is not much better, and then it just kind of smooths out and you can smash the keyboard with your face and win. So, that's an oversimplification, of course. Uh, but... That being the case, 
I am going to play on easy difficulty level because I have beaten this game before, and I am just showing it off to you, and this will make it easier to do that with less save scumming, uh, because otherwise the first couple scenarios are going to be a pain in the ass not only to play, but also to watch, and you will enjoy it less. If you don't believe me, I will put a link in the description down below the video where you can get Aether Lords for yourself and give it a try. All right, here we go. So, here is our map. If you have played turn-based strategy games from this era of computer gaming, you will recognize this setup. We have our city, we have our hero, we get more heroes as we go along, buttons to do stuff to end our turn, resources that we need to spend, Time does pass, of course, which will have certain consequences as we go on. And then here is the map that we have to play on. It is much smaller than it looks, but that's because this is just what we have, uh, like, uncovered. So this is showing us what we can see. That will change as we explore. All right. Let's check. We've got Esmond, level 1, life 10, site 14. And we have, oops, let's see, the Castle of Vitality. Castle is 30 of 30 energy. We've got 50 ether coming from it. All right, tutorials are on, so I can explain all this stuff to you and you can see how it works. Global spells offer an alternative route to victory different from ground combat. The purpose here is to destroy the enemy castle by ether attack. Global spells allow you to cause the enemy castle direct damage. Challenge your opponent to ether combat, that is, combat between heroes on ether arena, and also protect your own castle from ether attacks. Heroes don't have to come face to face on the map. Global spells cast by their masters will be sufficient. Ether combat follows regular combat rules, but heroes don't die. If castle defenders win, they will just withstand the attack. If the attacker wins, they will cause the enemy castle damage equal to their level. The most important global spells include the following, designating a hero as ether defender, which can be done in advance, or as ether attacker, Building Aether Fortifications, a fort that can be created at any place on the map to provide control over a large area around it. A fort requires daily upkeep payments in terms of Aether. The horizontal bar in the top screen section displays the list of global spells you can cast in the castle. The spell casting process takes some time. Note that you can charge the spell with extra amounts of Aether, which will make it more durable. So yes, right now... The only spell that we have is Summon Vitality Recruit, which basically is buy another hero. So there you go. Buy, buy a new hero. Uh, so here are our resources, right? We've got Mandrake Root, Black Lotus, Bloody Ruby, Poison Emerald, Star Sapphire, Smoke Diamond, Frozen Flames, and Additional Aether. So if you cast a spell using more ether than they cost, basically overcharge it, uh, it is much harder for the enemy to overcome it. So let's see. We've got all of our heroes here. Global spells. You don't need another hero at the moment. Uh, we have not encountered the other player yet. And I think that's it. Okay, so Esmond over here. First level, 10 life, 14 sight. Hero upkeep, 1. And he needs 50 XP to level up. So you do level up in this game, and you get specializations and skills that make you better at using your cards. We will see that as we go along. There are also items that you can equip or consume to have certain effects and you can dismiss your hero. Over here are the spells that we start with. This is our deck. We have four Spitting Fingus. They are a 0-2 creature, that means zero attack, and two endurance or defense or vitality or whatever you want to call it. It costs two ethers to summon it, 
It can't attack, but if you sacrifice it, you get to deal one damage to target creature or hero. Once again, if you have played Magic the Gathering, you will recognize this. Yeah, what a fingus. Tick Warriors, 2-2, two, two, cost 3 ether, no special abilities. We have the Dense Forest Enchantment, which costs 2 ether. Uh, this means creatures with power 1 or less cannot attack whoever controls this enchantment. More useful than you would think. Sharp Claws Enchantment, 2 ether, the power of the enchanted creature increases by 2, so its attack goes up. And finally, Ether Drop. And look, these are even called Summons enchantments, sorceries, right? Ether drop, uh, you pay one ether and you get two. So it basically just gives you an ether. Now we will have to tweak our deck as we go along. Uh, we will find additional cards, sometimes as loot, from fighting creatures, neutral creatures out here on the map, like this. There are also buildings, like this one. The Mentor adds 100 experience points to a hero once per hero. Magician's Wagon provides a few runes for each non-primitive spell in the Discovering Heroes spellbook, and so forth. So we have a bunch of different places that we can acquire new cards, and then we can tweak our deck to work the way we want to. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. I want to save. There we go. All right. That's true. Yeah. It's not the size of the deck, it's how you use it. But having a big deck helps. Alright, monsters. On the territory screen you'll encounter hostile beings. Usually they guard territories or access to resource sites that you'll need to capture. Each monster has an area under control, which is a circle around it with a radius of one step. Entering this area automatically triggers a fight with the monster. Monsters cannot be controlled by other players or races. You can't make peace with them. No diplomacy with the neutrals. Monsters' levels don't improve if they win battles, and they cannot improve their magical skills. So basically that means the encounter does not change over time. If it is too hard for you and you can't beat it the first time, you can try again and it will be exactly the same. They can use only a limited number of spells, but high specialization can make them serious opponents. You might find each monster can be dealt with most efficiently by using individual combat tactics. Think well before starting a combat with more powerful monsters. Their properties can be viewed in tooltips. For victory over monsters, your hero gains certain amounts of experience and loot in the form of resources. The amount depends on the monster's level and the hero's learning and looting skills. Two very valuable skills. Well, this diseased rat is level 1 with 3 life. It sounds like we can take it. So. Yes, hello. I would like to go, please. I had to hit enter. He would not just go. That's fine. Sometimes that happens. Okay, here we go, our first battle. You see us drawing our hand down here. You are now in the combat screen. Here, one-on-one -on -one combats between your heroes and enemies take place where the opponents do not have direct contact with each other, but only cast spells. So that means that the big monster in charge and us, we're going to be trading spells back and forth, but it is our cards that are going to fight each other. Combat goes by alternating attack and defense phases. The only way to stop the combat is to issue the surrender command. The game cannot be saved during combat, which must end with the death of at least one participant, but sometimes both. At the beginning of the attack phase, each party gets random spells from their spellbooks, while via ether channels they get special white ether necessary to cast spells. At the start of combat, opponents only have one ether channel each. With time, this number increases. The speed of the increase depends on the hero's or monster's level. At the end of the attack phase, your hero's spells located to the right of the first five cells are discarded. So you can only have five spells in your hand. This one, as it gets bumped over and you draw new cards, will get discarded back into your deck, right? 
but also down here, your ether channels, that's how much ether you get per turn. The longer the battle goes on, the more ether everyone gets. That is to force the battle to wrap up. Um, it's kind of like uh, if you've ever played Monster Sanctuary. It's like if you go for too many turns, all of the monsters start getting a stacking bonus that makes them faster, stronger, and more dangerous. And that's to force the fight to end so that you cannot just sit there forever. There are three kinds of spells. Creature summons, that can be controlled. Sorceries, which are magics of short duration. And enchantments, long duration. To cast a spell, click its icon. If you cannot cast it, it will be dimmed. If the spell can affect a combat participant or creature, the mouse cursor will take the magic shape and allow you to select a target on the battlefield. So here we are. Here is our hero. Here is our enemy. So, we've got our attack and cast phase. Down here we can choose auto combat if we like. This is our graveyard. This is enchantments. This is their hand. This is artifacts. And then we have health, ether pool, and ether channels. So this first number is how much ether you have. This is how much you're going to earn. So right now, we don't have enough to cast anything because uh, all of these cost at least two ether. So we're just going to pass. Oh, disease rat cast stink rat. There it is. But it's got summoning sickness. It's fine. Okay, we're going to summon a fingus. Yeah, he's having a great time for now. So we've just cast a spell and summoned a creature under our control. They can attack the enemy hero or their forces and protect our master or its master, which is us. Each creature has power, which is damage, and toughness, which is what it can sustain. So if a creature receives damage exceeding its toughness, it disappears from the battlefield and goes to the graveyard. Creatures can be in a certain state, such as resting, or have abilities like flying, which have appropriate icons. Enchantments cast on them, of course, will give them additional stuff. So, of course, remember, the Fingus cannot attack. It has two toughness, though. And you can see here, there's its special ability. And here are the icons affecting it. Creature is resting after summon. Creatures without the haste ability can't attack or use abilities that require the creature to rest the turn it is summoned. Normally, the creature will get up in the beginning of the next phase. And then creature cannot attack. So even if we give it a power score, like with the Sharp Claws enchantment, the Fingus still cannot attack. But it can block, and this 1-1 one, one Stink Rat cannot get through it. So. Alright, now we got a Disease Rat. And you can see down here... Now we have two ether channels, so we are earning more each time. The disease rat is 1-2 rather than 1-1. One, one. Also, if you tap it, I mean, sorry, rest it, and pay one ether, you can remove one creature from a hero's graveyard so that it can't be brought back. Well, we're going to cast Dense Forest. You can see it happening back there, even though this is in front of it. Next time we cast it, you'll see the whole thing. So these are enchantments. They last more than one turn. They affect the entire battlefield, your hero, the enemy, one or all creatures, etc. Uh, they last until the end of the combat or until they are dispelled or canceled out. They can increase strength, provide protection, force an enemy creature to rest, prevent it from getting back up, and so on. So... Uh, you can see what enchantments you have by looking over here. And there are several different ways to break enchantments. The easiest way is there are sorceries that dispel them, provided that you have such a spell. So, here we go. We have the Dense Forest enchantment, which means that creatures with one power or less cannot attack us. Um, lol. Because that's all he's got. All right, so now we've got our first sorcery ether drop. So sorceries, magics of short duration, of course. You know the drill. Okay, let's see here. That's three ether, two ether. Uh, 
Gonna summon a tick warrior. He's resting. There you can see that it gets up after it's done resting. And now we have multiple creatures that can attack, right? Or at least one. So you can hit attack with all creatures so you don't have to manually assign them. And this is all that this guy's got, right? So at this point, I'm just kind of showing how this stuff goes. We're going to put Shark Claws on our Tick Warriors. Go. And we're going to attack. So, creatures attack in defense. Of course, you're going to attack with your creatures. They're going to defend with their creatures. So, we have power. We have defense. You know how that works. After the attack, creatures will have to take a rest, which lasts until the next defense phase. In other words, creatures that attack this turn cannot also defend this turn. During the defense turn or phase, you can send one or more defenders against each attacker and try to block them. Only surviving defenders will get through if they kill their, um, or surviving attackers will get through if they kill their defender. All right, here we go. He's going to block. And you can see they aim like they're pointed towards the creature that they are blocking. So like the one was aimed this way, the other one was aimed this way because those are the creatures that they were going to block. There we go. So he's got nothing at this point, so we are going to attack his life total directly. Boop. Goodbye. This guy looks like he's half Xenomorph on his mother's side. Alright, we've got 20 XP, we got 9 Mandrake Root, and 9 uh, Black Lotus. Okay, what we got here? Oh my god, please. I'm begging you. Your hero gained three runes for every non-primitive spell in his spellbook. So, 20 of 50 up here, and you can see our resources gathering down this way. Oh, this game comes a little broken. Ooh, a bat. Let's do it. All right, same song and dance. Hmm. Well, okay. He didn't have enough ether. He had a bad draw. <laughs> so he literally could not defend himself. Okay. Still got some movement left. Let's go for it. Uh, this guy's a little different. The Velos is a 3-1 creature. It only costs one ether, so it's cheap to play. If it is in play at the beginning of its controller's turn and receives no damage, destroy it. So in other words, if you want to keep this from turn to turn, it has to take damage every turn. Hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that is, it's, it's an interesting art style. All right, let's see. Uh, if I do that, I will wind up with three, so... That will not help at the moment. But I can block its first attack. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't have to do that. Go back. 
We'll just kill it. There we go. Hard to attack with no creatures. He's got nothing, you can see there's nothing in his hand. So it just came with the one creature. But of course, these beginning enemies are for you to chew on. Cut your teeth. Alright, we leveled up. So, your hero gained enough experience to upgrade his level. Level determines the basic amount of health, basic speed at which the number of ether channels will grow during combat. And when advancing to a new level, we get the opportunity to choose a new skill or upgrade an old one. All skills have three stages. So if you are a Heroes of Might and Magic fan, you will know that as uh, basic, advanced, and expert. <laughs> a special symbol, the glimmering glory wreath in the right-hand corner of the hero's picture. Right here on the game panel notifies you the hero has advanced to a new level. Okay, here we go. What we get is we can choose Ethereal Attack. Increased damage dealt to the castle by this hero by one point. Learning, we get 25% experience. Luck, slightly better chance for hero specialization to work. Well, our specialization is Raise Dead. Every turn in combat, there's a chance that a creature from the graveyard will return to the hero's hand. Hmm. So that's actually pretty good. Because that means we get dead creatures back in our deck. On the other hand, anything that gives you more experience points is great because it means you're going to level up faster and uh, you're going to get more levels overall in the course of the hero's career. So the sooner you take it, the more you benefit from it. Being offered at level 2 is pretty good. This one, it's not bad to have that waiting in advance, but like we're not ready to attack a castle yet. Yeah, y'all think XP? That's what I'm leaning towards. And of course, we'll see some of these again. Every time we level up, we'll get different choices. All right. So we have basic learning. You see one star. It'll be two stars for advanced. Expert, we'll get three. And we can have up to five skills. Okay, I'll see. Ooh. Uh, we only need 40 XP. Let's go uh, talk to this guy. We'll just level up again. There we go. Nice. What we get this time? Ooh, advanced learning. Basic bargain reduces the cost of spells and runes by 20%. And concentration. Hero receives one additional spell every fourth turn in combat. So it increases your hand size every so often. Hmm. Bargain is really good. I, I like advanced learning, but I think I might actually take bargain. Because anything that makes spells and stuff cheaper is pretty good. And since we already have learning, it's guaranteed to come up again. All right. River Halo. It's a special boy. Notice that we have 16 life now. Because we are level 3. River Halo casts River Halo. So the River Halo, uh, Halo is a 0-1 creature. Only costs 1 ether, so it's cheap. And it has flying. If it rests, it steals up to two ether from the enemy hero's ether pool. So basically, by tapping this creature, you can steal mana from your opponent. Well, we don't care for that. This fella does not need any more ether than I've already got access to.
Oh no. It's got one attack now. What will we do? What will become of us? Yeah, you got nothing, bro. You got nothing. Side note, I do like the user interface in this game. The little animations, uh, like the way this iris closes when you end your turn. Stuff like that. Oh, nice. We got a Star Sapphire that time. Bronze Mechos. Oh, boy. Our first kind of serious opponent. Not really. Once again, eight life, but only two cards. So... Oh no, it cast Enfeeblement. So, uh, Enfeeblement means the creature cannot get up. A creature with the cannot get up ability will not get up at the beginning of its controller's turn. Getting up is the opposite of resting, so that means untapping. There you go. Well, you got another one of those. Does not appear so. Four damage. Halfway gone. Got anything else? I see you've got one card. Well, it doesn't matter. Goodbye. This is a prison. If you release the hero from the prison, he will find himself under your control. Well, that's what we want. Hero Maulene is released from the prison and will follow you in your cause. Maulene. Maulene. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, so Maulene is level 7. So 28 life. Free casting specialization. The hero has a chance to cast a spell without paying its ether cost. Uh, if the spell has a variable casting cost, the initial cost only is ignored. And she comes with expert luck, so there is a much better chance for her uh, specialization to work. And expert regeneration, so every turn in combat, she regenerates one health, making it much harder to kill her. What do we got down here in her deck, though? We've got two ether tap. This is the upgrade of ether drop. You get three ether back instead of two. And either draw, a further upgrade, gives you four. Then she's got some Tick Warriors, but she also has Tick Workers. So these are kind of like uh, slivers in Magic the Gathering. All the ticks that you summon make all other ticks better. So every Tick Worker you have increases the stats of every other tick by 1-1. One, one including itself, which means as soon as you cast it and get it onto the field, it becomes a 1-3 creature. Tick Queens give all ticks two hit points. Let's see. We've got in Strength of the Woods, power of all friendly creatures increases by two, so more damage. Endurance of the Woods, that's two toughness. Healing. You pay X Ether, gain X life. Very nice. And Fury of Nature, destroy all creatures, deal X damage to caster, where X equals the number of destroyed creatures. Alright. Well. Let's get about it. Got a bunch of runes. Okay. Plague Rat, Razor Beast. That's the thing we need to defeat. This one's a little easier than the uh, uh, 
what's it called? Fl uh, flaming Iron. This is the training scenario. So we'll let Esmond take this fella out. Oh no, a stink rat. Oh no. What will we do? We shall point and laugh. Let's see. Three ether. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, multiple creatures can block a single attacker, which is something that we are going to have to think about. Our opponent has one card left. Ah, oh, that's what I was looking for. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. In the order I wanted it, even. Go. I'll do this, but I don't really need to. But you never know. So. Goodbye. Farewell. And if you're familiar with games of this type, creatures have all of the abilities and stuff that you would expect, right? Like there's trample, flying, haste, vigilance. All right, we got a plague rat. Three, four. Rest and pay X Ether. Remove X creatures from target hero's graveyard. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, he's gonna have to block the big one, otherwise he'll go down in one shot. But that's okay. Yes, the green faction. A faction of silly hats. I would argue that most of them have silly hats, but the Vitals definitely have the silliest hats, for sure. Okay. Let's save it. We're doing pretty good. I like that she rides a different mount as well. Okay, here we go. 17 life. This one's going to be a little bit tougher. But we are also a little bit tougher. You can see, like, right there, the slashes on it are almost like military rankings. It tells you the level of a card at a glance. So, there we go. Check this guy out. It's a robot. It is indeed. Marche. Um... start here because I can do yeah oh free casting worked there you go see up here in the corner she didn't spend any ether so now we get to do this oh no this fella he is not bro he is not bro it's more like an uh-oh bot Oh, he had to discard a card because he couldn't afford to cast it. That's a shame. Well. I'm going to take a chance and hit him to get some early damage in. He could have a creature with haste. We'll find out. Hopefully not. Because I don't remember, honestly. Okay. 
ta-da, and see, look, now they are all our 3-7 creatures because this one came onto the field. Ooh, free casting again. Hey. This guy's nothing. You're a joke. Of course, reminder, if I'm making this look easy, it is on easy difficulty level, and there is a reason for that. All right. Bye. She's so excited. Uh, I love this victory screen, but it makes me think more of the Warlords time franchise. Change. Yes, it is the time of war and death. And already the Kehats have struck the first blow. The warriors of Chaos are mighty fighters, but also feeble-minded and weak-willed. This should be our guiding light. Expecting an easy victory, the Chaos are easily exhausted and we will make them pay for their carelessness. Go and destroy their vanguard castle, but let cautiousness guide you, and do not leave your own castle open to the enemy's attack. May the power of life be with you. So now we have an opponent for the first time. Yes, there is so much ham here. Uh, they must have saved a bundle on catering because this voice actress is chewing the scenery like nobody's business. So this is our second training scenario. This is to teach us uh, how to defeat a castle and protect our own castle. Yeah, very much. I very like evil Lin, kind of. I would say. All right, this is also the first scenario where we're going to see things like resource generation buildings, and we're going to see resources lying on the ground as opposed to just the ones we are winning from fights. See, like, look at this dude. There he goes, wandering around. Okay, let's see. Okay, thirty, thirty, twenty. Who we got? Okay, we've got Aline. She's got Prolonged Blessing. Each turn, each Bless spell cast by the hero has a chance to act one additional turn. That's great, except we don't have Bless in her deck. Hmm. Davin? Davin. Davin. Uh, Treant's Guile. Any Treant under this hero's control has a chance to drain health after successfully attacking an enemy hero and pass that health to its controller. So basically, he gives them sort of shitty lifelink. Uh, which one of these should we use? Kind of leaning towards her because she does not have Bless in her deck yet, but the Bless spell is quite good if you get it. Hmm. Devin. Alright, well, let's have him. He can be our step and fetch it. There we go. Green ether node captured. 30 ether per turn. And she can be our warrior. Okay, there's our first spell shop. And then we have a stone portal. got a trader's wagon and these are resources so like there is black lotus that's mandrake root as you might expect this should be poison emerald we've got an emerald mine down here and then there is an enemy hero starting at level four this is where the game starts to go off the rails because uh, the enemy has much more powerful heroes than you. And depending on the scenario, like with any turn-based strategy game, you know, some of them are going to move around and some of them won't. The ones that come after you, uh, the AI tends to get a huge bonus. Like, they'll just show up out of nowhere on turn 3 with a level 7 hero who's got, like, all expert level skills and spells. Uh, and you're over here, like, you know, messing around, picking up resources like, whoa! 
Oh, provides a skill to a hero once per hero. Nice. Need to get over there. But first, let's go this way because this is a dead end. Let's get started. Honestly, I really like the first Aether Lords. Uh, it is a fun game. If you are the target demographic, which is to say, uh, if you think that these kinds of games are entertaining, you will probably like this one specifically. But the second one, I think, is far more fun. Uh, it has five separate campaigns, all of which are pretty interesting. And I like it because it follows up on some lore that is kind of nodded to in this first game. Alright. Tick. Um, it came out not long after the first one. I think Aether Lords 2 may have been either 2002 or 2003. Uh, there was definitely not a huge gap, and you can tell because the user interface, a lot of the character models, uh, textures, and things like that, sound effects, they were all recycled. This was definitely built not just in the same engine, but probably on the skeleton of the first game. Uh, they, they look identical. They just play a little differently. And mostly it's the campaigns. Like, realistically, the second Aether Lords, I feel like almost could have been an expansion pack to the first Aether Lords. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it's very Turbo Nerd. There is a specific target audience. Oh, also, we have not reached this yet, but you will see the creatures kind of lining up in a semicircle behind us, right? There is actually a limit to how many creatures you can have. If I remember correctly, I think that it's ten. So three in front, and then they will summon two in the gaps for a total of five on either side. Okay, let's see. Let's do this. And let's not put all of our eggs in one basket. Okay, let's get rid of these. Alright. Only two creatures left. Okay. That was very silly. Uh, for some reason, instead of defending, it used the um, special ability and removed creatures from our graveyard, which is like, that's fine, I guess. No, that's so valid. Actually, let's just end this. There we go. If you can't block that, then it's over. Let's, see. Let's send her over here, and then Devin can pick up that mine. Let's see the chaos moving across the way. Set up our defenses first. There's a surprising number of character models and backgrounds for combat and stuff in the game. More than you would think. Aether Lords is one of those games that uh, it's, it's flawed, every game is, but it deserves more credit than maybe it gets sometimes. Because again, this game is one where it just kind of... Um, it kind of got forgotten. It got swept aside. I think the second one had a little more impact, maybe because for a lot of people it was more fun. Uh, and that's because it was better balanced. Among other things. The heroes had a little bit more identity as well. 
But I think it still deserves to be better known than it is. It deserves more love than it gets, which is one of the reasons I was excited to play it on this current Thursday schedule. So thank y'all for voting it up, and thanks to our Patreon patrons as well for shortlisting it and choosing it to get played at all. Alright, our Sea Halo. It can rest to steal up to four ether from the enemy hero's pool. That's fine, it can't do anything if I spend all my ether every turn. Which I'm gonna do. Alright. Block it or don't, it doesn't matter. The AI also a lot of times knows when it's beaten because it thinks several steps ahead, so if it cannot take sufficient actions to protect itself, it just won't act. It'll skip its turn. You saw that they did not assign a defender because it did not matter whether they defended or not if they had. Um, it just would have meant that the other tick would have taken them out and finished them off anyway. Right. Let's grab that. There we go. Resource acquisition. So, uh, first of all, you'll need resources to buy spells and runes for them, and also to upgrade buildings. There are seven kinds of accumulative resources, which we have already seen here, you know, but they're broken down into plants and minerals. Some can be found in sites, and you can get them as loot for victories over monsters. More important are sources of ether, a non-accumulative resource. Without ether, neither you nor your heroes will be able to develop normally. You'll have to get ether of your own color. Red for Chaos, blue for Kinets, green for Vitals, and black for Synthets. Capturing a source of the other side's ether will bring you only half the normal productivity, but by doing so, you also seriously slow down your opponent's development. Other resources can be acquired mainly by capturing buildings where they grow, such as gardens, or where they are extracted, mines. Such buildings will be generating a certain amount of resources for you every day as long as you control them. Current resource balance is displayed on the panel at the bottom section of the screen by groups. So you have a resource icon and two figures. The daily income is what you have up top right here. And the total amount available down at the bottom. For ether, it's the daily income and the balance displayed. Mandrake. Nice. Okay. Sells runes for common spells at the lowest prices. Let's come back to that. This fella's level 3 with 11 life. I like the spellcasting animations. Oh, boy. So we've got a kobold warrior, which increases the strength of all kobolds by one, which means we want to get rid of that, because our enchantment currently active means creatures with power one or less, but they have two or more. And these are team attackers. That means they get a bonus for um, every other similar creature, of the, like creatures of the same type that attack at the same time. They kind of all have to go at once. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. There we go. That knocks them down to one power so that they can't actually attack. Lesser strength. Oh, no. Dang. So, lesser strength plus one plus one. Uh, so that's three. Let me do five. And then I can do this and this. It's a bit of a waiting game. Uh, our opponent is out, but we still have some spells. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. I'm gonna wait and draw another sharp claws because that's about all we have left, actually. All right. Now we can attack because no matter which one blocks, our ticks will be victorious. And he's gonna block with both. Oh, no, no, no. I see. Oh, he blocked one creature with both in order to... Uh... Yeah, he took one out. Okay. He took the damage in order to block the other one. Well... You only get to do that once, though. And now there's nothing that he can do except sit here and wait for the inevitable. Goodbye. Nice. 75 XP. Ooh, and we got some bloody rubies. Alright. She is leveled up. Let's see. Actually, I think she already leveled up once. No hero. Okay, no. We're good. Um, oh no, she is level 3. Let's see. So, concentration, regeneration, or estates. Estates reduces the hero's upkeep, which is pretty good uh, because, like, see, this is... When they say ether is non-accumulative, it means that this is how much we're earning, but we can't have more than that. Uh, so this eats into the ether that we are earning that we can spend on other stuff every turn. So that's not a bad skill to have, because you see that it jumps up very quickly as your hero levels up. This makes them much cheaper. Extra spells. Regeneration is also very good, though, because we don't have a healing spell yet. I think because we're still earning an enormous amount of ether, like, compared to what we're spending. Let's take regeneration first, and then we've got suppression. Ooh, that's a really good one. So this reduces the chance for the enemy's specialization to work. It's the opposite of luck. And if they have uh, expert luck... Expert Suppression cancels it out so they have the normal chance. Okay, Prentice's Lab captured. Here we go, a Spell Shop. So to increase their combat efficiency, heroes periodically need to upgrade the spells in their spellbook. Spells are sold in towers, mainly creatures, and in laboratories, which are mainly spells. Uh, sorceries and enchantments. Each shop has its own preferred spell level, and spells of other levels will be less readily available there. Doesn't mean that they will be completely unavailable, just you're not going to find as many. To cast all spells except cantrips, which are the most primitive ones, you have to have runes, which are used up when you cast spells. Runes are sold at portals. So you have a secondary resource. In addition to this stuff down here, you have to have runes to cast powerful spells, and you will use those up in combat. So first, you have to assess whether the hero can use the new spell efficiently. Some spells should be bought as sets, like a group of creatures with complementing abilities that will have a stronger effect than several identical creatures. To buy a spell, just right-click it, or uh, select it in the right-hand section of the shop. And then select the spell in your spellbook which you'd like to replace. We have a limit to how many spells we can have, as you see over here. Oh, and if you buy uh, multiple copies of the same spell, each additional copy costs more. So now we have some uh, we have some options. So let's see. So we have B Warrior. It's a 1-1 one, one creature with flying. We've got Magic Hornet, a 2-2 two, two creature with flying, and First Strike. Also, at the end of combat, destroy any creature that received damage from Magic Hornet. So Magic Hornet is a, uh, is a great spell. If a creature is damaged by it but doesn't die, like if it's not strong enough uh, to actually kill the defending creature, the creature will die anyway after the attack is resolved. Mystic Hornet, flying first strike, and again, at the end of combat, destroy any creature. 
Dark Forest, creatures with powers two or less. We've got two copies of Dense Forest. I think that would be pretty good. So this is the spell price. It's going to cost us seven Black Lotus, which we have plenty of. So, total. There we go. So let's do that. Okay, we have Ether Tap. I think we can afford to upgrade one of our ether drops. We've got ether feeding. Cost one ether. Recycling. Pay one ether, sacrifice a creature, gain one ether channel. So basically, you pay a, a one mana this turn and get rid of a creature, and then you earn an additional mana on the next turn. Stone ring just gives you an ether channel. Ether Harvest, the controller of this enchantment adds two ether to his or her ether pool for each summon spell cast by any player. So while this is in effect, every creature that comes onto the battlefield gives you mana. Martyrdom. Sacrifice a creature and its power and toughness are added to another target creature's power and toughness until the end of the turn, and that creature also gains trample. Alright. They only have Bee Warrior. They don't have anything else that is a bee. So I'm thinking maybe what I might do is I'm going to get rid of one of the Spitting Fingus and buy either a Magic Hornet or a Mystic Hornet. Mystic Hornet's 3-3, three, three, but costs 6 Ether. But that's nice because, like, is a is a big boy. Yeah, no, it's really identical. Right? Like you can you can tell. <laughs> you you can tell. There we go. I think we can afford that. Yeah, we're spending mostly black lotus, but that's okay because we have loads, even though we're not earning any. Do we want an ether harvest? Stone ring I don't feel a need to have right now. Ether harvest though, uh Hmm. That's a really good enchantment. Yeah, I think I might actually swap out a Sharp Claws. Uh, because, well, or maybe a Tick Warrior. Well, this is a 3-3 creature, so... With a bunch of special abilities... We also just added these, though. These give us more ether. There we go. That's a source of ether. Maybe since we upgraded these, we'll just have two of them, and we'll replace the other with a different source of ether. There we go. So. Let's see. Here. And you... Go that way. Oh yes, I haven't been doing it because it wasn't important until now, but you can set multiple heroes uh, to go to multiple locations, and then they all move when you hit end turn. Let's see, I feel like... Is there also... No, okay. I felt like I was remembering that there was a way to set course points where they could jump and do multiple tasks, but I may be wrong. And then here is our list, by the way. So forts, rune shops, additional buildings, mines, spell shops that we can see there. Alright, let's try this updated spell deck. Wait a second. Why did I have an ether drop in my deck? I thought I replaced those. Oh, we played Crystal Ball. Let's see. 
enchantments. Here we go. Crystal Ball, all friendly creatures gain first strike. We hate that. Lord. Talk about a bad hand. Orc Shaman. A 1-2 creature, and you can tap it to get one ether. I don't want him to have either. Wow, really, look at this. Sometimes it happens. There's nothing you can do about it. have to give it a little bit of a boost. Uh, oh, it's got first strike though. Ooh, that's right. Oh, but it's team attacker only. So see, the other kobolds, they get a bonus if a bunch of them attack at the same time. The orc guard can only attack in a group. So if you don't have more than one, it can't attack at all. Oh, but now he does have two. Where are our other spells? I am unhappy. Because I should have a spell that would just stop all of them from attacking. Mm, where did that go? This is going to be rough without those new spells. Where did they go? Did I not purchase them correctly? Did I forget how to do that? Did I forget how it works? Surely not. Stranger things have happened. Okay, he's got nothing else. And he's not attacking because we can block all of the attacks. I mean... There we go. That's what I was waiting on. So, uh, we have Aether Disturbance. So this is a strategy that you can use to hold out against enemies, right? We just have more life than this guy does. But I don't have anything because of whatever reason my purchase did not go through, apparently. Uh, we, we can't break through his defensive line, but he can't get through ours without multiple attacks. I don't know why he's not attacking, because he could kill all of my ticks, and then he would be able to hit me again next turn and actually deal damage, but... Maybe he's thinking that uh, he would, I, I would block with multiple ticks, and then he would lose some of his guards. I don't know. Uh, regardless, as time goes on and you build enough ether channels, what happens is ether disturbance or interference will build, and you will start taking damage every turn based on the number of ether channels you have. So the idea is that as you are opening ether channels, the environment becomes more and more stable and the magic starts getting chaotic and you start losing control until this happens. So it's another time limit mechanic. Stone portal captured. A rune shop. Okay, so... need to buy... It's for all spells. 
None of these, these are all cantrips, so they don't require anything. Oh, I bet I know what it is. I bet I know what it is. I'm big dumb. This is what it is. Uh, it's because, see, once they have this mark, they're not cantrips anymore. So you have to have runes to cast them. They got rid of this mechanic in the second Aether Lords, actually, and I think it's because people found it annoying to deal with two sets of resources. I certainly did. Uh, so what was happening is I upgraded these spells, so if you do not have enough runes to cast the advanced version, you will cast the more basic version of those spells. So, like, I could only cast Dense Forest because I couldn't afford Dark Forest. And right here, this shows you, like, how many times I can cast it based on this. There you go. So see, right there, I've got five casts of each of these before I run out. Like I said, I think they got rid of that uh, in the second Aether Lords, or they may have simplified it to where, because you do still pick up things like Mandrake, and, uh, Mandrake Root and Poison Emerald, but it might be that um, they either became part of the purchase cost for spells... Uh, or they became um, part of the casting cost in place of runes. Okay. Let's go give this another shot. A great Treant. I don't know about that. It seems okay. I don't know if it's great. There we go. So now here are our new spells. <laughs> Yay. take a little damage, but that's all right. So Treants have regeneration. So that means that uh, they recover if you don't kill them outright. Let's see. We got some bonus ether. Let's use it on this. That'll protect us until I can get Dark Forest out. Oh, the Treant cast Dark Forest as well. Oh no. Uh-oh. You know what? I'm just going to take it. So that's, yeah, two or less. Well, that's okay. That's all right. There. We can do that as well. Plus, we can also do this. See, and I knew our Mystic Hornet is in here. That's why we don't have to worry, because the Mystic Hornet will kill anything that it encounters, and it can fly over these dudes to just directly attack him. There we are. One down. Yes, keep feeding me ether. This should give me enough to cast Mystic Hornet. No? Oh, oh okay. Hmm. Each of these summoning spells that I'm casting is giving me ether as well, so I can cast more. Now you see 
how good that spell is. One of my favorites. It's got one more spell. I'm waiting to see what it is. Okay, it's another. It's a great treant. Which is just a 3-3. Three, three. There we go. Okay, let's see. Let's... Gonna have to block with both of them. It's alright. I'll have to just stomp back. Just boom, 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 boom. Okay, we don't need to use either tap. can only block this one, so there's that regeneration. Gives you a chance to, uh, to not die when your life total is depleted. So like I said, if you can't kill them outright, if you can't just remove them from the game with a spell effect or similar, then there's a good chance that a Treant will keep coming back to bother you. No, it's not quite Treebeard. Not nearly as impressive as all that. Bzz. So yeah, this one has uh, Flying, First Strike, and Death Touch. I believe is the Magic the Gathering equivalent. Need to get some tick queens and things like that. Oh, nice. I would be tempted to wait because our hornet has first strike, meaning if it defends against the treant, it will hit first and take the treant out without taking damage, so it's not of concern that the Treant has three power versus the Hornet's three toughness. But I'm not worried because one more attack and this guy's going to go down since the Treant can't block the Hornet. So it's more useful to attack than defend. Goodbye. I love the red tree blood. That makes sense. Alright, level up. Let's see what we got. Resources. The hero can carry up to seven runes. So instead of five, you see right there, we can carry seven. Uh, because, um, or six rather. I said five. No, I, no it is five, isn't it? Yeah, because we only cast each of these one time. Um... So yeah, resources allows you to cast these spells that have limited use more times. Reduces upkeep, additional spells. Yeah, let's take resources. Because that's going to be a going concern. It's something that we need to be thinking about. This fella, the Taros. The Petit is silent. Pateros. See, look at that. Because each of these only costs two ether, having that enchantment in place allowed me to cast all of them and then still get a tick out. Oh, immobilize. Oh, no. So it can't untap. Uh... 
I will wait to cast that until there is a need. Oop. Power tap. Stole my ether. Another Pateros. So yeah, they have flying. And if you tap and pay ether, you can remove an enchantment that has that casting cost or less. So see, this only costs two ether. He could just remove it. He's going to attack instead. That's fine. I don't have enough Finguses out to uh, do anything about it, but because he chose to do that, I can now attack with both of my ticks, and there's nothing that this fella can do to block them. Oh no, because this one doesn't untap. Fui. Well, that's alright. There we go. We will attack with one tick. It's only got two spells left. I hope not one of them is not another immobilize on our hornet. Fingers crossed. They should both be creatures. Yeah, because we don't... Uh, he's only got one out and he's got to have more than that. But we don't have a dispel, so... Okay. Now he can block with both. But that actually should be okay, because if we kill one of them, which we will with first strike, we won't have enough to kill that one, but it can't kill the hornet either. And then it will die anyway, because of the death touch ability. Ah, there we go. I thought he might... that way he can block twice. So he's gonna save it. Ah, phooey. I did a purify. So that stripped all of the enchantments off of our hornet. Of which there was only one, but it reduced the attack back down to three. Boo, boo hiss. Boo this Taros. Actually, no, you know what? I will save that, and we'll get rid of the other Taros. Oh, got rid of our uh, ability that was giving ether. Well, you know what? That's fine, actually. Ooh, didn't block. That's a bold choice. It's trying to uh, save something to attack me with because if my only flying creature is tapped, then I can't block either. Ooh, Purifying Strike Specialization. Okay, that gets rid of enchantments when a creature deals damage directly to you. Well, here's the thing, though. You have 8 life. And I'm about to deal 9 damage, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, farewell. Blech. Cool. All right, let's see here. Uh, that is a fort being held by the Chaos. We will have to take that to go on the way down here to them. Red Ether Node. Hmm. Okay, this looks like it's going to be a dead end. So, and you will notice, by the way, this is turned like 90 degrees compared to this. So, like, here is this corner. As opposed to, you would think it would be the upper left corner. The north left. <laughs> uh, it is not. Okay, let's see here. This is, yeah, Mandrake Garden. And that should be a Lotus Garden few runes for each non-primitive spell. That's nice. Let's do that. And you go over here. Mini Hopper. 
It's only got six life points, so probably not a huge deal. Hoppers are unaffected by summoning sickness. In other words, they have haste. See, they all get to attack at once. At the end of turn, if there are three or more hoppers in graveyard above mini hopper, return mini hopper into play. So they self cycle. When all of these die and stack up on top of each other, the bottom one will come back as long as there's at least three dead above it. Yeah, that is pretty awful, Oralith. I don't know why that's the case, especially since, uh, to my knowledge, you cannot rotate the overworld camera on the map. So, I don't know. I guess I could have blocked one of those, actually. I should have. I don't know why I didn't. Probably because I was trying to multitask, like, talk and think at the same time. This fella's out of tricks. All they had was the three mini hoppers, so. There we go. <laughs> well, that's that, I guess. This ridiculous design, these weird little pogo lizards with handlebars on their own mechanical jumpy leg. That's so dumb. Three runes for every non-primitive spell. And seven frozen flame. Nice. Not too far from a level as well. Okay, that brought us up to maximum, I do believe. Okay, bronze abomination. That's some bloody ruby down there, though. Is there anything else that he needs to be doing? Devon. I don't think so. We'll just have to wait for a turn while we clear this out, and then he can mark that while we go to the next battle with Aline. Ooh. Great. Well, let's see here. That's not enough to get our Hornet out, but also if I don't do something, we will discard the Hornet, so... So let's do this instead. There, now nobody's happy. <laughs> oh, the upgraded version. A big Velos. But again, if it receives no damage before the end of its controller's turn, destroy it. Oh, well, I don't know. It's a personal choice, and I haven't asked. <laughs> I guess there's all kinds of reasons why. So, so yeah, Velos are... They're part of a, like... Oh, that was a damaging spell. Um, Velos are burn creatures. They're meant to get out really quickly. You attack with them, deal as much damage as possible, and then they die. So they are disposable, but they have much higher attack than they do toughness. Uh, much higher power, rather. And by virtue of which, they can deal a lot of damage quite quickly. This is his last card, so it's worth blocking, even though... It'll kill the tick because then it will die since it didn't take any damage. There we are. It's not bad, that only costs one room.
You can queue up actions as I just did. Now the camera, of course, is very dynamic in this game, which is a setting that you can turn down. You can make it less active so that it doesn't whoosh around with every action quite so much. Um, but if you cast multiple spells or, or do things like confirm attack and end of turn while an animation is happening, they will go through that in the order that it was done. So, Okay, let's see. That is a red ether node. That's runes. So let's do this. And this. Each scenario will take a little bit longer as we go through and, you know, enemies get higher level and stuff like that. Ooh, uh-oh. Cast Weak Toxin on us. That causes us to take one damage at the beginning of every turn. Not great. Gonna have to spend some runes on this one because now we're on a time limit. Since she doesn't have, uh, she does have regeneration, but it's not enough to stop that from happening. But it will cut it in half. There we go. Now we got something. Yeah, dots like that, of course, are a great way to win a fight. But anyhow, so as we get further into the campaign, as you might expect, it will take longer to complete each map. So we're going to get through this one in this first stream tonight. And after that, like my goal will be tentatively to try and get through at least one scenario each time that we stream on every Thursday. Uh, if we can get through two, we will, but we'll see what happens. You might also notice these little numbers right there hovering over the sword icon. The sword or shield shows the attacker or defender status of the creature that is performing the action. And then the number hovering over top of it is the order in which they will go. Alright, this should be the end of this. Nice. Okay, so you come over here. And... We'll save that, and instead, let's go over this way. Oh, I forgot to level her up. Dang it. I saw that and didn't think. That's okay. Abomination. So these are nasty because they have regeneration. Thankfully their power is lower than their toughness. So that's not nothing. Here they come. Uh-oh. At least we don't have a dot this time. And we have more health than we did before. And your health, of course, resets at the beginning of every battle. So you don't have to worry about if you fight multiple battles in a row. Like if you get attacked, um, you know, by an enemy hero right after you have fought a battle such as this one. No harm done. You will have your full health. On the other hand, that will whittle down your runes. Because your runes are consumable. Ah, boo. Inconsistent reality. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. And that. There we go. They've only got one spell left. see how this goes. Will he block? Yes. It's counting on that regeneration. Yeah. That's why I almost put sharp claws on this Fingus. See, because they can block. And this abomination will not be able to kill it because it only is going to inflict one damage. 
if I had put uh, sharp claws on it, it might have killed the abomination. I should have gone with my gut. There we go. Now we have two fingus, though. Fing Fingus's fingi? Whichever way. What's important is that we can block both of these abominations if they attack. And yeah, the icons on the creature designs may not be as, uh, like, iconic and beautiful as in Magic the Gathering. But, there are some good ones. I still like quite a few of these, like they are appropriately weird for their given factions. Okay, come on, let's see. How long will this regeneration hold out? Because, bro, you're going down first if we get Aether Disturbance. So, I mean, this is only prolonging the inevitable. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Alright, well, I'm bored now. Okay. Let's level up. Hmm. I can understand that opinion because, uh, actually, I think that Wizards of the Coast got in trouble recently for uh, having some AI-generated art in one of their D&D &D handbooks. So... Hmm. Regeneration is a good upgrade. She's got suppression and resources. Ethereal attack is not bad. That is the goal of this one. Let's let's take that. She's got two slots left, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. Plus, her upkeep is getting high, but we don't need estates yet, I don't think. Okay. A gibberling instigator. Gibberlings, weirdly, are uh, kinet creatures. You wouldn't think. So, uh, they are unblockable but they also do not untap. You have to cast spells to untap them. But that's okay, because we don't have to block. Well, that's a real shame for you, bro. Spirit of War! Spirit of War, I think, is... Here we go. Yes, Enchanted Creature gains the Restless ability. Creatures with Restless do not rest after they attack. So. The whole strategy here is to put that on one of these Gibberlings. So that it doesn't need to worry about the fact that it doesn't untap. Unfortunately for this dude, it's only got one of those. Now, since they are unblockable, he's not going to bother blocking and risking, like, taking them out. He's just going to attack every turn. Which is a surprisingly effective strategy, but that's okay. Because this one is going to be forced to rest. This one won't. But he won't be able to use that one anymore. There's no reason not to attack every turn, especially if he can only block one. Oh, he feels compelled to do so. Well, this guy's gone. Bah. Farewell. That's it. It's over. It's over. 
overkill, that is. <laughs> Be gone. I'll give it to him though. Took a pretty like significant chunk of damage out of us. Okay, this is ours. A summoner's hut. Ooh, nice. We definitely want a piece of that. Okay, here we go. So we can buy great treants. Treant saplings, regular treants, ancient treants, another mystic hornet, the magic hornet, which is just the cheaper version. Weird exchange, sacrifice one creature, destroy a target creature. The controller of the destroyed creature gains life equal to the toughness of the destroyed creature. And this one, lesser healing. It's an enchantment where uh, you pay one ether and gain two life. And then we have Dissolution. Pay one ether, sacrifice a creature, and you gain ether equal to the sum of the creature's power and toughness. Not bad for emergencies, but... Let's see. This one I think will actually be useful. We could maybe need that. Let's swap those out. And it might be nice to have another expensive creature. Oh, thank you for the raid. I appreciate that. Uh, let's replace one of these ticks, I think. That looks good. And then we'll go up and grab some runes for free. And swap places. Thank you. Welcome. Appreciate the raid. Uh, it's going pretty good. Oh, no. Chaos Heroes. Uh oh. Okay, this is where it gets dicey. Let's see what happens. It's been going well up to this point. What do we got? Okay, that's just level one. That's level seven. See, this is what I was talking about. We're not too far in. We've got a level seven creature with 31 health, or level seven hero. So. Let's see what happens. We're going to have to deal with them. Then we got to go back and defend our castle. I don't know if any of y'all raiders have ever played Aether Lords before. The game definitely deserves a little bit of extra love, I think. It, it doesn't get as much appreciation as it should. And if you are interested in this, I will be streaming it every Thursday until we get through it. Ooh, uh-oh. They're lining up at the castle. I'm a fan of the graphics. Oh no, we lost seven structure points. Uh, Watch this. Oh boy. That is a hero controlled by the opponent. We know how this works. Okay, I'm actually going to send Devin over this way as well, because he might be able to take out the level 1 hero. Bruh, I'm begging you. Oh, can we not? Hmm, is there another one lined up? Hmm, it's like there is an obstacle in the way. It might be another hero we cannot see. Yeah, the interface is pretty nice. I'm a fan. Dang. That's not great. Well, we've got a couple turns to make it back, though. Okay, oof. Oh, I think I left some poison emerald on the ground over there. They're going to pick it up. Oof. Yeah, because every time you attack a castle, you lose structure points equal to the hero's level, regardless of their attack. Oh man, this is going to be close. This is going to be close. 
But yeah, if y'all are interested, this is our current Thursday series. Feel free to follow and subscribe if you like. And I will be back with Eye of the Beholder 2 on Saturday. And Monday, uh, Specific Pixel and I are actually starting the brand new Switch remake of Mario RPG. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, let's see here. Okay, come on. There we go. Managed to stop him just in time. One more attack would have had it. It would have been over. Okay, this is going to be... This could be rough. Level 7. Let's find out. We've got full runes. That's not nothing. I'm going to go ahead and go for the expensive one to make the best use of the ether we have. What do we got? Oh, we just have a stink rat. That's nothing. You're nothing. Okay. Let's go ahead. We'll attack with our tick. And if... Yeah, there we go. She's going to block, so... Get a first glimpse of a chaos hero over there. That... Oh, okay. You're going to waste two zaps. Well, I mean, that's that's fine. That's a valid strategy. Okay, now we have to remember that this is here, but remember too, this is a great way to spend our leftover ether at the end of every turn that we're, is otherwise just going to vanish, uh, but it can take you over your maximum, and that's very important. So let's see, we got another tick here. It's going to leave us with one, so let's go ahead and we'll hit lesser healing again. Because we're starting at much less health than uh, Helgi over here. What do we got? Oh, a rock wall. This is our first wall creature. Y'all remember walls from Magic the Gathering? <laughs> so it has no attack and cannot attack. It can only block, kind of like our Fingus over here. Uh, but it has 10 toughness. Now, the only problem for Helgi here is that we have Mystic Hornets. So that's going to suck. For her. Okay, there's no point in attacking with our tick because nothing will happen. We've got another rock wall, boo. And a stink rat. Okay, well that's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh I, I have I have described this to people before as uh Heroes of Might and Magic the Gathering. So, if you're into heroes, if you're into magic, especially if you're into both, uh, you may like Aether Lords. Or, if you're really into both, you might hate it. Who knows? Okay, let's do Aether Harvest. Then I will get that mana back. We're going to cast Ancient Treant. We're going to boost it with Sharp Claws, because Ancient Treant not only has Regeneration, it also has Trample! Oh no, Lesser Strength. I should have killed that with my Fingus before she cast that. Lol. Okay, well we won't make the same mistake twice. Bruh, I... Okay. Here, let's just avoid that same problem. All we have to do is uh, hold out until we get a hornet, and then we can... That's it. Then it's over. Unless she has a flying creature. Yeah, that's worth it. We need to keep our healing up, though, because, um... Now, she's higher level than us. She's going to gain more ether channels per turn, which means ether disturbance is going to start for her first. But we still need to tough that out. But if we can do so, then ether disturbance might be the way that we win. 
because if we take a really long time like we're doing to draw that hornet, uh, then the walls are just going to prevent us from doing any damage. There it is. There's my baby. My son. Hello. And just in case, so that Helgi doesn't get any big ideas. Alright. There we go. Up and at him, my boy. My lad. Oh, yes, please. There we go. Haha. <laughs> Boom, baby. Ooh, fire wave. Ooh, we hate that. Is she gonna do it again? Oh, yep, there is my tick. Don't do it a third time. Oh, she zapped it. Oh, no. Oh, because she got attack spells. Uh oh, well, that's all right, I guess. If she doesn't have a dispel magic, we can pile that on the tree in until I can trample past the walls, I guess. Yeah, that is, that's a pretty good strategy. I used to have something kind of uh, similar. Oh, that was dumb. Uh, I would play Dingus Egg, uh, which causes you to take two damage each time. Um, uh, each time a land you control is destroyed, and then Circle of Protection artifacts, and then I would play Wrath of God, which destroys all lands. Then you just have to pay one time to protect yourself from Dingus Egg because it is a single target. You know, it's it's one source. It happens all at once. And that would usually wipe the uh, the enemy in one go. All right, it's an endurance battle now, and we've got more endurance power because we've got regeneration and two lesser healings. But yeah, that's that's good. I love. As cheap as they are and as frustrating as they are to be on the receiving end of stuff like that, it's a good strategy. It's like, well, that's that's what the game is intending. It was done that way on purpose. Uh, no, because the way Circle of Protection works is you activate it to nullify a source of damage that is incoming. So you wouldn't do Circle of Protection until the artifact dealt damage to you. So yeah, that's exactly the way that it works is you cast Wrath of God and then pay Circle of Protection to negate the Dingus Egg. Can I get one more Sharp Claws though? Oh, we got another rock wall. Okay. Well, if I can get one more sharp claws, I can take these out, but that one, that's why she did that. She's got 111. That's okay. That's all right. I can follow up with a fingus. A spitting fingus. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of like a, a reaction. You don't preemptively activate the um, uh, the circle of protection. All right, there we go. We got another hornet. Now does she have another zap? Find out. I'm saving my fingus rather than using it on that stink rat. Oh, there's ether disturbance. It's starting. Because my thought is, uh, if I have to attack here, I can use the fingus on that guy to finish him off. Okay, here we go. I need to remember I forgot to do this like the last two turns in a row when I add ether. Because look how much ether we've got. Oh my goodness. Wow, we actually wound up with more channels than she has. Wild. Buck wild. That's okay, though. Go forth, my lad. Polymorph. Oh. 
It's okay. I mean, she's got two hit points. She's killing these to drain their health. Well, she saved up a bunch of those. Okay, well, that bought you a turn. So well done, I guess. And I'll hand it to her. I mean, she, uh... She did take out a second hornet. That's gonna cost us runes. It's so funny when that big fire wave, like, rolls over you and doesn't do anything because it only affects creatures. Okay, but here's what's gonna happen, though. You're, you're done. Bye. <laughs> oh, a thousand XP. Oh, but now Devin. Devin has to fight. That's okay, it's level 1v1. It's okay, we got this. We're on even footing here. Oh no, stink rat. Who is this, Hagfield? Hlagfield. Look at those pigtails, though. I mean, they're not. They're like blades coming out from the side of the helmet, but that's what it looks like. It's, it looks like he has got fantastic pigtails. And I love that. I love that for him. What else you got, bro? You got nothing. Okay, he's got three stink rats now. I'm going to dispense with one of them. And that way, our tick should kill both of the other two if he blocks. He's not. I didn't figure he would. Oh, I think he might have regeneration, because he's got he's back up at nine health now. Gotta be careful. Gotta take it seriously, since they are on that even footing. Why are all the Vital heroes, like, caked up, though? Look at that. It's like real party in the front, business in the back, because he's jacked, too. Oh no, Tenacious Hands worked. That means when you use the spell, it doesn't leave your hand. Oof, I'd put all my eggs in one basket that time. I should have thought about Zap. Oof. That's okay. The worst that happens is if Devin goes down, then um, Aline will take this guy out next time. What we got? Okay. Let's leave that because the Fingus will either be able to block the 2 2 rat. Oh, okay. Well. It's going to say, or the other one. Well. Take out the other one, which I guess I should have done. Ooh, now it's 3-4. Ooh, come on. We might lose Devin here. My hubris. Because he doesn't have regeneration or anything, so... This guy's gaining health very slowly. We're gonna have one hit point after this. Yeah, I think we're gonna lose Devin. Wow! Miscalculated the hell out of that. That's all right. That's the price you pay for making a bad decision. I got cocky. Yep, this is it. Ah, well. He didn't even let a creature do it. Whoa. Uh, good game. Good game. Oh, your hero is dead. It means he's out of the current game, but doesn't automatically mean you lost the mission. You can summon more heroes with sufficient resources at your castle. And you can summon Recruit, a first level hero, or you can use Summon Warrior to summon a third level hero. So there we go. That's okay, though. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, we got some levels. Let's see here. Concentration, we got Ethereal Attack again. We got Artificer. 
So you can use artifacts up to twice in combat. Well, we don't have any artifacts. So let's stick with that, I think. Ethereal attack. And... Uh, okay, it is, it is recovering. Slowly. <laughs> we took out their big hero, that's what matters. Okay, well, I have learned my lesson. He's not allowed to have rats. I mean, that's fine. I've got three times your health, so if you want to get mad about it, that's... that's okay. Oh my goodness gracious, with the zap spell. Have some class. Well, that's that. <laughs> well, we know what to do about that. Oh, really? Okay, well. Undo all those sap spells he hit us with. Gibba. I mean, if you want to lose that rat, that's fine. Your regeneration's not going to help you against Aline here. She is not that other guy. Good lord. Die with dignity, bro. Yeah, he didn't even block. He did all that and then didn't even block. Just knew it wouldn't help. That's fine. Okay, let's see here. That's pretty much all she wrote, I think. I could... What do you need to level up? Quite a bit. It's probably wisest to simply... I'm going to fill up. And then... Uh, mm, yeah, we can go that way. We'll go through there and then come around. Okay, we're back up to 20 energy. That's not too bad. We'll cut our way this way and without... Um, without Helgi to stop us, there's not much that the Chaos can do, I think, at this point. Particularly because Aline here has that special ability where she deals more damage. Ethereal attack. Lesser unsummoning. Boop. Aw, oh, forced it back into our hand, which meant we immediately discarded it. It's alright. That's okay. What else you got? Nothing. I'm trying not to use runes for this one, because this fella will have a limited hand. So there is no reason to spam our most powerful spells and stuff when we can just use our, our cantrips. There we go. <laughs> the camera hadn't even turned all the way around. AVX Scout, yeah. As you might guess, the AVX have flying. That's okay. Yeah, he's gonna block because otherwise he's going down, so... 
I knew that wouldn't last, and now he's got no cards. Farewell. Forts. Heroes can stay for a long time. A fort is a tower which can house only one hero at a time. If you order a hero to enter an unoccupied fort, they will remain there until you tell them to move out or they lose combat with an enemy. Forts have large control areas, which is an enemy interception radius, so when an enemy approaches the fort with your hero in it, they will have to fight your hero before they can go past. That's the idea. You can upgrade these as well. And you can destroy them. And then they'll have to be rebuilt. Oh. We got down here. Oh, I realize after... There we go. I should save it. After we saved our castle. But you got nothing. Okay. So, we don't need to stop in here, but you will remember earlier there was like that flaming ring right here. So that was because they had a hero inside, so we couldn't go past the fort just willy-nilly. We would have to actually stop and fight that hero. Well. Okay. Orba. Goodbye, Orba. It was nice to meet you, and farewell. With Helgi out of the way, they really don't have anything else they can do. You know, I knew she was going to do that. I should have cast a Fingus and destroyed that rat. That's what I get. That's what I get for having thoughts. That's fine. Yeah, you galumph back over there. Let's see. It's, uh, if I do this, I'll do both of them. She can't block right now, so... There. Back at you. Okay. Once again, I suppose that will teach me, won't it? I should have sacked both of those fingers and done it in. Well, that's all right. There's more Finguses where those came from. Finguses. Plural. <laughs> okay, well, we're not waiting around for her to power that one up. Oh, of course, the double zap. Alright. We don't have any direct attack spells as the Vital. Not yet, at least. There. Not giving her a chance. Well, I'll give her this. She made me use a rune. Because she can't zap that to death. And this guy can't get through it. Oh, he didn't regenerate. Bro, you had one job. Wow, okay. Alright, alright then. Okay. <laughs> Dang, she's putting up a fight, though. She really is. She put all of her eggs in that one basket and it's working out for her. I would have saved that zap to use against that hornet, though. I really would have. Because the thing is, you got 4 health, and I got 24. So you're going to go down a lot quicker than I am. That was very silly of you. All the stink rats in the world won't help her now. Because <laughs> our boy here is going to fly right over him. You know what? Just because fuck you... For the audacity, actually. There. Extra super dead. 
I <laughs> Why does she have jiggle physics? That's not necessary. Okay, this is a free skill. So I'm going to save it because I don't know what skill we're going to get. It could be trash. What we get? Artifacts. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't want Artificer. Okay, what do we got? This is runes for common spells at lowest prices. Uh, she's got plenty of runes, and we need to be heading towards the capital. So is that... There we go. Let's go straight for it. Or do they have... We've got another hero. Bro is summoning a bunch of little guys to try and stop us. It's okay. Yeah, go on, get out of here. <laughs> There's our ethereal attack. 24. Again. Keep at it. Keep at it. This one might be thinking, it's like, I'm going to slip behind the lines and attack the enemy castle. It's like, well, okay, if you want to. But you're level one, which means there's absolutely no way whatsoever that you will take my castle down before I take yours. What we got? Yeah. Ooh, there we go. I think that the campaigns in Aether Lords 2 are more interesting because you have persistent heroes that like like level up and change appearance, uh, and you carry them through the entire campaign, like we did in Disciples. In this one, you just have a different hero every time and have to like build them back up over and over again, which is less interesting. There we go. Chaos is defeated. Excellent. Well, that worked out great. The treacherous synthets have joined an alliance with the equally loathsome chaos. A fatal danger to our stability and order. This allegiance needs to be destroyed. Our allies, the vitals, will stand by us. They, too, need to halt the chaos progress into their own territory. Selflessly, we will come to the aid of their exhausted warriors striking a blow deep into the assailants hearts by attacking their castles by raising a castle of the chaos or synthets we will paralyze the enemy and gain valuable time to recuperate and build a strong defense but remember preserving our own castle and the castle of the vitals is extremely important for the overall campaign Control yourself and do not let righteous rage dispel all caution and composure. May the forces of reason and order be with you. So there you go. So this is the first map where we're going to have all four factions. So we've got Vitality, Chaos, Synthesis, and Kinesis. Those are the names of the actual like overarching powers. So we're going to play the Kinets this time, or rather next time, because that's where we're going to end it. I think that that was a great first stream for Aether Lords. I hope that you all had as much fun as I did, because I am certainly grateful for your time. Uh, you could have spent it doing anything, so I appreciate the privilege of having you spend it with me. I will be back with more of the Flying Leaf campaign here in Aether Lords next Thursday, which is November the 23rd. That falls right on a big American holiday, but that's okay. If you can't catch the live stream, of course, you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I will have an Aether Lords playlist over there, along with playlists for every other game that we've played on the channel. 
Between now and then, I will be back on Saturday with the continuing adventures of Stout Muffin in Eye of the Beholder 2. So don't miss that. Things are going really well. We've added a couple of new NPCs to our party that you'll want to meet. And on Monday, the 20th, remember, that's a big day because Specific Pixel and I will be starting Super Mario RPG on the Switch, the brand new remake. We are super hyped for that. I hope that you are as well. We really hope that you enjoy it. And uh, final note, on December the 10th, we will be doing our first annual winter holiday live stream that's going to go all day, kind of like we did for Halloween back in October when we played Sweet Home all in one sitting. We will be playing holiday-themed games instead during December, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to share them in chat or uh, put them in the comments down below the YouTube video, which you can also like or just leave a leave a comment for the algorithm. Don't forget to turn on notifications, and if you want news about stuff like the holiday streams before anybody else gets it, jump over to our Patreon page, and you can follow for free, even if you don't pledge to a paid tier, and you'll still get all of that news before anybody else does anywhere else, because we always tell our patrons first. Either way, once again, grateful for y'all here in chat tonight. Shout out again to Compass Cult for the raid. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. And for all of the subs, resubs, gift subs, the likes, the new subscribers and followers that we get in between streams. Thank you all so much. And until next time, as always, thanks for playing.